to day two, another day. Just came back from Canadian Tire, pick up a couple more tools. Tools of the trade. So, okay, we said we were gonna do something about the rust, and we will be. So I picked up this foam sealer, and this is what we're gonna be using to fill in the gaps. And that will give us the foundation to lay down our Bondo. Also picked some Bondo filler up. Um, and just a couple of other things here. We got a sanding block to make it easier for a spot putty, which we will be putting on for the finer details, and various sandpaper grits. So we're gonna put the MX3 back on jack stands, and we are gonna continue the job from yesterday, which is creating our custom straight pipe exhaust to replace our old rusted out one. Also, we picked up some oil for the MX3 and this, and me and Shane decided we'll just do an oil change on this thing while we have it on jack stands. I'm really curious to hear this setup. So, today we have a lot of work ahead of us, so let's just get started. Mr. Shane, Boom. we matching today. Oh, yeah. Ripping that lost royalty. Yes. You can see the dents. Just kidding. Guys, don't stand on your roof. Yo, I was planning on putting this in the FRS. Hey, what do you know, dudes? It actually fits. That's sick, dude. The important part of any project is always going to be the prep work. So, before we get into the filling, I'm just gonna sand shit out of this rust and try to get off as much of it as possible. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, you can tell it's because it it's warm, right? And I just like followed it down. This is Now once this is all sanded down and there's no protruding pieces, we'll be using this expanding foam. It's just as easy as like throwing it in there, dude. change complete and step one of rust removal underway so now we're gonna try our best to cut this bolt off finally so we're just gonna let this dry out and then we can proceed to the bondo step well I should have opened the bondo package first because it came with this mesh which I can actually use instead of grip tape. What I can do, it's not too late, I can put this behind the grip tape. Um, and yeah, I guess I've made it a little easier for myself. So there's between the sheet of metal and I'll just stick this in there. So here's the bundle work. 
fixing up some of the rust down here as well. And do the same on the other side too. So now we just wait for this to dry. So while we're waiting for that, give this a try, cutting off this rusted bolt. Let's do this. And can just stop by. What up, what up? Merry New Year's. <laughs> yes, sir. The bondo is still drying up to the touch. It's a little soft, so can't really sand it yet. After much determination, I finally got that thing out. Cut it just enough and then broke it off. And that's it. Yeah. Ow, motherfucker, that's still hot. <laughs> now we can play around. Gotta yeah, test fit the custom exhaust again. So to show you guys what it looks like. I have to figure out some sort of way to just hold it up. That's what the exhaust straps are for. Cut it down to size and hope for the best. Ace. Canadian Tire Turbo. Sick. So we'll just tighten all the bolts up. What I'm basically doing to reinforce and attach the exhaust setup I'm using this wrap. It's only like five bucks. I'll be putting a rod through here too, just so the exhaust is stable and doesn't really shake too much. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there it is. All connected, so now this is not going anywhere. But we're getting hungry. So we're gonna go grab some grub with Kanji. We'll wait until the bondo fully cures and then I'll probably come back here tomorrow to finish up the paint job. We'll reinstall the wide body kit and probably say that this is a-okay for the rest of winter. This is serving its purpose. It's gotten us from A to B and it's protected us from the harsh reality that befalls Calgary every other month basically. And uh, it's a dry, cold winter, which I don't really like, but this thing has gotten us past that MX3. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll take this time to seal up our makeshift exhaust. And since I have no welding experience or the necessary tools, we'll be doing a cheap man's weld using this exhaust sealer, which I picked up for five bucks. If you guys have the resources or any buddies who know how to weld, uh, just go to them for any advice. Now, I don't recommend you guys do it this way, but if this saves me even just a little bit more on gas, then I'm all for it. So let's give it a shot. We'll clean the area we're gonna be sealing first. <laughs> I don't recommend you guys doing it this way, but uh, this is how I'm gonna seal it up. Once it's all wiped down and completely dry, now we can move on to the painting stage. And I'm borrowing this idea from Chris Fix, and this is to prevent the harsh edges when you're spray painting. So 
so I saw this on Chris Fix's channel on YouTube and it's a genius idea. By curving the pieces of paper, instead of getting a harsh edge, you'll be getting a smooth gradient. And everything I'm doing on this side, I'm doing on the other side as well. Then we'll finally paint this thing. And the bundle dried for the grill, so I put that on. All of the fender pieces are painted and dried. And you guys are probably wondering how the exhaust turned out. Look! Ayy! It's actually pretty solid. And remember, this stuff is heat resistant. Not the prettiest job, but it will have to do for now. Once you've waited for a good while for it to dry, now we can move on to the clear coat. So, we am going to lightly spray it. Probably do two to three coats, uh, just to get it as glossy and as shiny as the stock paint. Sure, two coats is good enough. Doesn't look half bad. That gets rid of our rust problem. Now we go over here. This gets rid of our exhaust leak. Final setup, what this thing looks like. So this is for extra support. Feels pretty sturdy. Doesn't seem like it's gonna go anywhere. I put another one of those metal straps right here as well. Over here, everything's tightened. So this extension pipe actually was the replacement to this part, which I would have had to cut off from over there. But I decided to just flip it around to use it as an extension to this makeshift exhaust. But there you go. I think we're all curious to hear how this sounds, so let's start it up. Alright, 
So other than this foot still not being able to go down fully, I figured out exactly why it isn't. The metal latch on this aftermarket scorpion hood is like two, three centimeters longer than the regular stock hood. So this is the furthest it goes down. We also tried adjusting the hood latch. You're not really given the option to move it around that much. Like it's pretty attached. There's just this tiny little gap. So yeah, if you guys have any suggestions out there, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna open up on us while we're driving. So when I first bought the MX-3, I didn't really imagine doing anything to it uh, other than just fixing it up and prepping it for a winter daily. After it got into a little accident, I just started buying parts for it, mainly to fix it. I didn't really imagine myself going any further than this. I just looked at this as a small beginner's car to learn on. Back then, I never really had the resources to be able to do these kinds of things, so I feel like I owe it to you guys because you're here watching this video probably because you're into cars in some way. So to me, I think it's important that I tend to you guys by uploading process videos of me doing things to cars. And if you guys can learn through the videos that I upload, then to me, that's gratifying. Consider this practice before we move on to bigger projects. Like me, wasting time while I wait for spring to come. It's like midnight plug. All I'm missing is underglow. Hmm. Before I end the video, I will do a couple of drive-bys for you of the new exhaust. I'm curious to hear it myself on video anyway. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Good night, or good morning, or whatever time it is, wherever you guys are watching this video. Peace.